Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we're going to take a look at what's new with the brand new iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. The first thing that's new is the price. The price on the Plus has been increased a little bit to 769, 869, and 969. The iPhone 7 stays the same at 649, 749, and 849. It's the same as last year's model at least. Now the newer things that they've come with also is some upgraded memory, and that's been a long weighted thing, so that means the lowest memory is 32 gigabytes. So we've got 32, 128, and 256 now. So that's much better than what we had before. The next thing that's new is new colors. So here we have jet black and we have black. This is more of a matte or flat black. And the colors obviously are new and that means they got rid of one of them, which is space gray. So they got rid of the space gray of the 6S Plus and 6S of last year. It's now replaced by these two new colors. We also still have gold, rose gold, and silver. So we have those options as well. We also have new front-facing and rear-facing cameras. So the rear camera is 12 megapixels on the Plus. We have an extra 2x zoom camera, and they all have image stabilization that's optical. So that means while you're holding it, it won't be as shaky. You hold it like this, and it shouldn't shake like it did in the previous versions. We also have a quad LED flash in both of the phones, so that should help with brighter flash when you're taking a nighttime picture. On the front, we have seven megapixel cameras. Let's turn this off here. We have seven megapixel cameras on the front, and those are improved as well. So that's really nice. We also have new displays. While the resolution hasn't changed, the actual displays have changed. They now support a wider color gamut, or basically more colors. So that should be really helpful for those of you that want a more accurate display. It's very bright. And it's also got a really nice look to it. It actually looks really rich and it's 25% brighter than the previous version. So that's really nice as well. The home buttons are also new. They actually don't push. They have a Taptic engine that's built in here and it slides back and forth, making it feel like you're pushing the button or kind of shaking the phone. So when you want to unlock, you just push it and it feels like it clicks and locks or unlocks. It's really nice. And I think it, it, feels like you're pushing a button. Some people like it, some don't. The obvious thing here is we also now have no headphone jack on either of the phones. We do get an included adapter, but we don't have a headphone jack on either. And instead, we have our microphone and speaker in the bottom like we did before, but we also have the headphone or the earpiece here also acts as a speaker so it can project sound in stereo out of this device. So that's really nice also something I really like on a lot of Android phones that they've brought over to the iPhone finally. Internally, we've got a couple upgrades. One is pretty significant. We've got an all new A10 processor. It's two times faster than the iPhone 6, and it is faster than the iPhone 6S. It's got quad cores, but it's got two fast cores and two slower, more energy efficient cores that help you get better battery life. So not only do we have bigger batteries in these devices also, we now get more battery life due to the, the cores in the processor from the A10 chip, so that should be nice. In the larger Plus model, we also get 3 gigabytes of RAM. In the iPhone 7, we've got 2 gigabytes, so that should probably help with the display, I would assume. And finally, we have faster LTE. It supports up to 25 bands in each device. That means you can get up to 450 megabits per second or three times faster LTE speeds than the iPhone 6 had. Now the other difference that goes along with the cellular antennas is instead of like the 6S and 6S Plus, we now unfortunately have different phones. So if you get an unlocked phone and that phone is for Verizon or Sprint in the United States, those phones will not work on GSM, on GSM carriers and vice versa. If you've got T-Mobile, AT&T, you can't swap between the two, where the 6S and 6S Plus worked basically worldwide. It's also true for some overseas carriers, so there are some different phones floating out there. Other than that, we have iOS 10, which is on every device, and we also have a zoom feature that's specific to the 7 Plus here. So if we go into the software, let's put the seven behind it tap this button it's 2x zoom and then we can seamlessly whoops we can seamlessly move between it by doing this just sliding our our finger and it switches to digital zoom when it's not one or 2x so it's it's pretty nice that way 
So finally, the last thing is it's IP67 certified, and that means it's water resistant and dust resistant. And that should help a lot of people that actually drop their phones in puddles or water or whatever. That shouldn't be a concern anymore. Apple's not warranting that. They're not warranting anything that's dropped in water and it's causing water damage, but it is sealed around the, the phone screen, around the buttons. The speakers don't allow water in, so it should be pretty good for the majority of people. So if you've seen anything else, though, that I haven't mentioned, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.